All right, guys, I'm excited about this. Today we are talking with Lori Allen. Now, you probably already know this, but Lori opened Bridals by Lori just two weeks after graduating from Columbia College in South Carolina. Now, four decades later, she's one of the world's most sought after bridal experts. She's also the central figure in TLC's reality show, Say Yes to the Dress, Atlanta. And by the way, her show has been running for 11 seasons and it's shown uh, and shown in 120 plus countries, which is amazing. Now, Lori's got a new incredible book. It's called Say Yes to What's Next, How to Age with Elegance and Class While Never Losing Your Beauty and Sass, which is awesome. Uh, in it, she chronicles her journeys as a bridal expert, a successful female entrepreneur, a breast cancer survivor, as well as a mom, a wife, and just a awesome human being. Um, I can tell you that even though I clearly, uh, you know, don't fall into the demographics of the book, um, I, she totally had me rolling, uh, laughing out loud, thinking and dreaming bigger. So you, I think you're going to love it. Um, it's packed with great stories and timeless wisdom, uh, again, that I think is going to really get you dreaming bigger, thinking better and doing more. Now, Lori's been featured on CNN, Good Morning America, Today Show, Wall Street Journal, just to name a few. So I'm super excited and honored to have her on Dreams Think Do. So let's get to this. Lori, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited uh, to be here. Absolutely. It's true honor. Um, and as I told you before we hit record, I, I was excited once we started. I started to do some research, all of that. One of my uh, team members and producers talked with your team. And she's like, you've got to have Lori on. You've got to have Lori on, which I'm wildly impressed by your story and the book. I've loved the book. But I also thought, you know, I'm kind of out of my out of my league here in some ways on, on some of the subject matter we're going to be talking about. So I went to the Dream Think Do audience to say, help me out with some questions. So we'll be getting to some of those a little bit later. How's that sound? I'm all for it. I love uh, And you know, I'm a straight shooter. I hope if you haven't learned anything about me so far, it's that I'm a straight shooter. That I believe thoroughly, and we love that at Dream Think Do. So that is fantastic. Now, I'm going to do something with your book because I enjoyed it so much. I don't normally read quotes okay. from the book, but Dream Think Doers, this book was written to you guys. Um, so I, I want to read a quote just to get us started here because I love it when authors clearly state who they're writing to because then you could just be unapologetic. Right. about what, you know, the stories, your strategies, all of that. So guys, listen to this. This is just a, a quick quote out of the book where Lori's talking about who she's writing to. She, you say, she says, you say, who are we? We are women who are about to turn the page. We're no longer young, but we're not yet old. The soundtrack of our lives includes Faith Hill, Lionel Richie, David Bowie, and Whitney Houston. <laughs> and our children are grown, flown, and out on their own. Now, I will say in the book, you go on to some specifics that made me laugh out loud that I will stop here and not include, <laughs> but I love that. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to ask why this group and why now? I feel like that this group is a tribe of women, which I'm right in the middle of, which I just yeah. 61. Amazing. Uh, is a tribe of women that is just pushed by the wayside. Yep. And I'm tired of it. I have been like motivating and helping women. And you, I know this sounds crazy, but in the bridal shop and on television, but in the bridal shop for 40 years and on television for 10. And I'm like, you look great and giving them confidence in this world. But when it comes to the mother of the bride and the mother of the groom, okay? Yeah. She has lost her confidence. Yeah. She, I see it over and over and over again. And she's lost herself in this. And she's the one that really needs the book, not the bride. She's got her whole future ahead of us. Right. The mother of the bride and the mother of the groom is the one that needs reaching out to. And well, she's yeah. on the back burner. I, I love that. I love that because that's, you know, again, you're with, with your career, but also with the TV show, you really do have a very special vantage point where you get to see the whole room, Right. And, and you're right, like the, the parents, the mom, the dad. And I know you wrote this primarily to women, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I just turned 50. So I'll just say I just turned 50. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm like, hey, I'm going to sneak in here too. <laughs> but it really is. It's to those folks that I think sometimes, you know, the world tells them this or they just start to believe it. That it's like, you know what? I'm, I'm closer to the end than the beginning. So I might as well start shutting down now. 
I just feel, yeah, exactly. And I feel like that, you know, I look at life and, and I talk about this in the book as a cookie and because I like cookies. And I look at Who it. Who does it? You know, Who does it? You know, <laughs> what I look at it. This big old chocolate chip cookie. So when you're getting past 50 and into the 60s, there's about a quarter of this cookie left. Yep. Are you going to let it just disintegrate? Are you going to enjoy it down to the last morsel? Yep. Are you going to do something with this last quarter of your life? And I feel like, you know, going and, uh, although I like to sit on the beach, but going and sitting on the beach for the last quarter of my life, just the whole time, that didn't happen. Right. Too much to offer to this world. We're smart women. And, you know, many of us have, have worked and, and given and given and given to our children. And it's our turn now. Yep. Thoroughly it's agree. I love that. And I do agree with you. I think I, you talk in the book that, you know, although you start to see some pendulum swings within the media, you know, for the most part, there's not a lot of heroes in this group, you know, that are featured, that are spotlighted uh, yeah. in this group. So you kind of have to stand out and be your own hero. You have to band together and, and find that, that tribe. We need to start meeting together and yep. motivating each other and lifting each other up. And there's very few women to look up to in this age group now. And we're 40 million strong. Right. And we have such a huge, huge population of smart and educated women that nobody is, even the advertisers, I don't know if you've noticed on television, but you know, if they're like gearing towards us, she's in a sweater. Or no. Right. She's a rocker. Number two. No. <laughs> That's right. No. She's like getting her walker or the bathtub that opens or whatever. No. Right. On. I we love it. Be better and way stronger than that. And yep. way smarter than that. You know? I agree. I agree. And it is, it's that whole thing. And I think whether it's, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 for crying out loud, it's there. You've got more. If you're listening to this, you got more to do, right? There's more you can do in the world. You've got more to give, uh, you know, you got more to share. And I don't think it's any accident anybody's listening to you right now. So this is perfect. Thank you. Yeah. My 86 has still so much to share with us, you know? And, and I want us to feel that way always. She doesn't get up in the morning and go, oh, I'm so old and this is hurting and that's hurting and da, da, da. I'm sure it is, but we don't hear all about it, you know? I love it. Because she wants to embrace her life. And yep what we have to do. I love that. I love that. Okay. I'm going to quote you again. Are you ready? Is this a little surreal to have somebody quote you? <laughs> but I love these again, guys, you're going to love this. This is like a dream, think, do mantra. So later in the book, yeah, you reference the cookie in this quote. So we're going to tie in the cookie because I'm hungry apparently too. So I love that. All right. You said you're, you're defining the what's next movement. Okay. You say uh, the what's next movement is dedicated to all of us who refuse to accept the idea that, we're, that we no longer matter. We've got so much to offer, so much life left to live. It might be very different life than the one we've been living. A new chapter is on the horizon. We have big plans or we should have big plans, but only if we make them. It's our time, it's our turn. Let's talk about making the most of what's left of that cookie. Now that's a dream, think, do, battle cry. I, I love that. So why, you know, when you think about this, you, you're obviously wanting to take readers, not just through your stories, but you want to inspire them to take action. Okay. What was, what was, a, what for you, what was the catalyst to be able to say, we got to do this? Oh, well, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what happened. Yeah. I turned 60 and I started having people in the shop, men and women saying, well, Lori, when are you going to retire? And I'd be mm. it, it actually took my breath away. I was like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> when are you going to retire? And I'm like, first off, why would you ask me that? Number yeah. one, because I kind of think it's rude, but number one, <laughs> hey, are you asking me that because I'm a female and you just expect me to retire at 60? You know, just the whole thing fired me. Just yeah. Fired me up. And I'm like, you know, nobody is out there standing up for us after 50 yep. saying, hey, you know, we're not going to stand for this anymore. You know, we don't have to be portrayed in the rocker. We, we have so much life left to give and we need to stop and think about it. I hope that when someone, re when a male or female reads my yep. book, more than anything, 
I just hope it will make them stop and pause and think about where they want their life to go. Yep. I mean, I do that a lot. You know, am I happy? Do I still love what I'm doing? Absolutely. But what else do I want to do? Yep. I just don't want to give it up. I'm not going to give it up. Yep. I love that. Well, and I think that this is interesting. My guess is when you started writing this, COVID-19 was not on our vernacular. People were not talking about global pandemics other than in zombie movies, right? So like, what do you think now? Why do you think this message is, is more important? It's maybe not easier, but it's maybe more important now. Well, I think it resonates more with people now because I think we have had time as a country to just stop because we are staying home more, all of us. I am too. Yep. But anyway, we are right. all having to pause. We are all having to take a step back. And in doing so, I think many of us are asking ourselves, are we happy? Mm -hmm. You know, do I want to continue in the career that I'm in? Am I fulfilled? I think no matter what the age is, many of us are asking ourselves that. Yep. And realizing the importance of our family and of our, of our lives and realizing that, you know, we could get COVID tomorrow and not be here. So many right. of us are up. So right. it's a perfect time to stop. Yep, I agree. Well, and I also think, you know, it's one of those that I'm guessing that everybody's just totally in line with you. But if anybody's pushing back and saying, yeah, but she's got a dream life. She's got her, her, you know, business. She's got her TV show. It's just all easy. Now, you faced significant challenges. You're a breast cancer survivor. You also, as I was doing my research, I'm like, oh, my gosh, uh, I heard about the big fall, yeah. right, in, in season 11. You want to tell us a little bit about that? And tell us a little bit about what you've learned about fighting back. Yeah. Well, I, I don't want people to ever think that everything has been handed to me, that I haven't right. worked for what I have. I have worked my hiney off, still there, but it's a hard work to know. Handed to me, and I speak about that in the book. Yep. My parents loaned me forty thousand dollars when I got out of college to start my business, and I'm saying loan, and that was all there was. Wow. I had to make it work. Yep. And you know, I ended up putting everything back into the business, and I go into all that into the store or in the book. And then after that, you know the business slowly grew for many, many, many months, years, weeks. I only took a hundred dollars a week out of that business. Can you wow. believe that? Wow. My husband supported us. I did that because I was just investing in my dream and I was not about to give up and the business grew and grew and grew. And then TLC came to us about the show. That's now, amazing. as far as the show, two things happened to me in this past 10 years that have not been real pleasant to say the least yeah One is that i was diagnosed in 2012 with breast cancer and i had a double mastectomy and went through all the breast cancer things that happened and and it was a really tough trying time but it with that happening and with my battle i decided to let tlc since it's a women's station first i didn't want to do it my yeah. daughter suggested she's like mom you have such a huge women's yep you have got to share your breast cancer battle. And I'm like, they see enough of me and I don't want to, it's too personal. You know? Right. So, yep. And I just didn't want to do it at all. And then I finally like, okay. And there were many days that we filmed that special for TLC that I did not want to be filming, but I did. Wow. And we got through it and we saved many lives with I that. Special. We I did. Bet. Because women watched it and they're like, oh my gosh, she looks healthy as a horse. She's got breast cancer. You know, yep. she didn't have any lumps and she went, she wasn't going to go in for her mammogram, which I wasn't. Wow. And I called her and she went in and she had two types of breast cancer, not one. Wow. And, you know, and uh, we shared all that. And then on top of it, then I'm getting all well from that. Then this past season, you're not going to believe this crazy thing. We are filming the opening for the show. And we're in our bridesmaids department and Monty is up on the top tier of our bridesmaids pedestal. And our producer's like, I've got this great idea. Smack Lori in the face with a gown. Cause we cut up all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's just us. So he smacks me in the face with a gown and we're twirling it around. And then it's a big full train. And are you familiar with what tool is? T I, I actually do know what that is. I, I, I'm in. Yes, I am. Yes, okay. 
So there's a layer of sequins, a double layer of sequins, and then tool on top of the sequins. Okay. Got it. I'm with you. Falls onto it's ivory and falls onto my bleached hardwood floors. Okay. So they're like, Lori, you need to go change for the next set. That's on the floor still. Didn't know it was there. I take one step on it and I'm like, this is going to be bad. Yeah. I, just, I couldn't even, I couldn't get my grip. I couldn't get my feet. I'm like, go to your knees. And I couldn't even fall to my knees. And I fell flat on my face, yeah. like bam. And broke my nose, had a concussion. I uh, knocked myself out, broke both wrist one wrist has a plate and nine pins now and three ribs all that <laughs> unbelievable unbelievable i had to root it when i heard the story i'm like are you kidding me and then i mean i know tlc just included some just even the audio and it's like oh my gosh of uh, yeah so it's incredible and you battle back from that and i know that was also a part of you know everybody was along for the journey not because you wanted it, but it's, you thought that that would inspire people, that would help people that are also facing challenges. So, and it shows how quickly an accident can happen. I was having the right. most fantastic fun day and how a crazy accident can happen and change our lives. Right. You know, really, really change our lives. And how important my family again was and how, how important my faith was yeah. to get me through this. Because you can imagine I've got two arms at the cast. I can't. <laughs> You know, I've got, I'm totally reliant, reliant on people at this time to help me. And it was just that crazy, insane time. So that's amazing. Now, I just don't want people to think it's all been easy. And right. Because like, this is reality TV, TV, <laughs> and I'm a real person. Right. And, you know, things happen. Yep. There is no doubt. No doubt. I love it. So here's the part where we're going to switch gears because I love what we've been talking about so far, but. I, you know, again, I want out myself fully in that I'm a dude. <laughs> I was not, I have been happily married for over 25 years and was not involved at all with the purchase of my wife's uh, bridal gown, other than basically my job was to go, Guh, when I saw her walk down the aisle towards me, which I did really well because it was very easy to do. Uh, so I really like so much of your world, I don't know. But apparently, a lot of dream think doers know your world. They know you. They love you. So we've got, I asked, I said, hey, guys, what would you want to ask Lori? And oh, my gosh, the questions flooded in. And we got some good ones. Um, so if you're okay with that, we're going to go a little rapid fire on some of these questions. Yeah, fun. Okay, cool. So a number of them, you already mentioned uh, Monty, which is Monty Durham, your, your fashion director at Bridals by Lori, right? Is that correct That's title? Yeah. Awesome. Correct. Yeah, right on. Hey, try to do the research, right? Okay, so you and Monty, I have watched some of the videos. You guys are hilarious together. Obviously, family, you know, all of that. Um, a lot of people wondered about you guys as far as just, uh, well, just great chemistry. We love them. They are so funny. Marilyn Feakin, longtime Dream Think doer, and also my aunt, full disclosure. <laughs> she was the first one to comment, like, woo. Um, anyway, she's like, they're hilarious. They're awesome. How did how did they meet? How did Lori and Monty okay. meet? So Monty and I met, it's in the book also, Monty and I met at, in a showroom. So he was the fashion director for one of my gown designers. And I looked over at him and I thought, I need to know him. I mean, his hair is back in this ponytail. He has on this Nehru jacket, this long beaded thing. And I mean, he just, <laughs> he just was so elegant. And I'm like, I need to know him. He's going to be my this guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. I love it. To people sometimes. I don't think yep. he's drawn to me, but I was drawn to him. <laughs> I, him said, I said, hi, Lori from Bridals by Lori in Atlanta. And I said, I'm having a fashion show. Now he doesn't quite word it like this, but I said, I'm having a fashion show in a couple of weeks. Would you come down? And he said, I bossed him around and said he was. So he goes <laughs> I said, who was that blonde? She is so bossy. And I wasn't that bossy. And he said, and I'm not going to Atlanta. When needless to say, he was in Atlanta in two weeks. That's and hilarious. You, I, I have a sense about you. You get things done. You find a way to get things done. I do. I get things done. And, and we, when he very first came down, he's very reserved. And I'm like, oh, there's more to him. So I take him to dinner and we laughed all night. And I realized that we have so much in common, so much in common. And, you know, it just, it just goes to show you 
don't close the door to the wide, vast array of friends you can have. Yeah. And Monty actually became, besides my husband, my very best friend. Yeah. And we talk five, six, seven times a day. And it's usually not about work. It's about everything in the world. And he actually now is the godparent to both of my, of my granddaughters. So he's family now. That's, uh, there is no doubt. That is awesome. And for anybody that hasn't seen the show, just go on YouTube and watch because it's just for you guys and the dynamic just between you two is totally worth it. So I love it. All right. So Sarah Holcomb, she yelled with 17 def different exclamation points. I'm so jealous. I want to talk with her. Um, she said that they seem like they have so much fun. I'm curious is there one bride that's left a lasting impact, which maybe is unfair. So maybe, you know, one of the, one of the brides that has left a lasting impact. And if so, why? Yeah. Um, to me, now we've had so many brides that just had such beautiful, beautiful stories. And I've seriously had to pinch my hand and my yeah. leg to just get through filming it and not okay. cry and boohoo and lay out on the runway. But um, one was Hope and Steve. And it was like during season two and they became hope or Steve found out that he had ALS about two weeks before they got engaged. Oh, wow. Yeah. And such a wonderful young man and so sweet. And she did back down one bit, her courage through all this. And she, they got engaged and or got engaged, got married had this beautiful wedding and he lived many years. He recently passed away, but just her will, for, she actually, I think, willed him to live longer to be with her. It was such a beautiful, moving love story. It really yeah, was. I bet. And to be there, right, especially in such important moments, right? But to be right there with them and that's incredible. What a vantage point. Oh my goodness. I just think back on it still and get chills. I bet. I bet. Okay, next one. You're doing great with these. Holy cow. Boom, boom. Rapid fire. I love it. Okay, so Stephanie French asked one that everybody's like, yes, ask this. So um, she said, I'd love to know how she helps brides cope when they're having a difficult time, whether it's not finding the dress or dealing with difficult family members, which you guys have had more than your fair share of. Um, perhaps it's missing a family member who couldn't be there on a special day or just dealing with general wedding anxiety. Uh, Lori's been uh, seen plenty of clients that are carrying baggage and she has such a great way with them. I think those skills could really be helpful for many of us during these tumultuous, tumultuous times. What does she recommend and can she share a story? I think communication has been my yeah. key because first off, I'm a talker and I love to talk and I love, I'm so interested in people. I mean, they'll be like, Lori, can you be quiet so we can get this film? Because I want to know where she's from and who her family is and who her mama is. And I want to know it all. Yeah. And it really does help me, you know, and I bet it does. And you can kind of figure out what's bothering them by just discussing and open lines of communication. And I feel like that now more than ever, we need to keep open lines of communication. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are depressed. I'm seeing it yep. coming in the store. You know, they're not getting out as much. They're not having as much fun and playing and they're depressed. Yep. And more than ever, we need to keep those lines of communication open. Now, as far as the mama that's angry, sometimes I have to pull her to the side. And really? I'm like, the mama, you need to calm it down, girl. You know, <laughs> not a southern way. <laughs> Hey, that draw helps. I would imagine it just allows you to deliver what you need to deliver. <laughs> I love it. I'll have to say, you need to just calm it down. She's really nervous, you know, and you're saying da da da, like her honey's looking big in that dress, and she doesn't think so. So you need yeah. to calm it down. That's right. <laughs> or you're going to miss this moment and maybe miss your daughter for the rest of her life, right? Like these are important moments. Thank you for this. She may never forgive you. That is how. Yeah important this shopping experience is. I and I know it really is a dress. I get that. I'm smart. I understand that it's just a dress. But, but it is the family and the core of people that she's bringing with her, agreeing with her on this next step of her life. Yeah. That's what the show's about. So yeah. when they agree and say, yes, honey, that's perfect. That's it. Then I mean, it's just like the skies in heaven open and it's like, yeah. ah! 
Exactly right. And you know when you see it. Yeah, absolutely. And it, I love that. It, communication, it's, it's so interesting. And even before we hit record, I think uh, you know, we were talking about even how masks are kind of changing the way that we're communicating, that normally we would be able to communicate with a smile or you know, with that look that says, hey, we're in this together. But because we've got masks on, we're not able to see that as much. So we've got to communicate with our words, uh, you know, even more. So I think I couldn't agree with you more. It's so, so important right now. Or your eyes, if you haven't had yeah. a Botox. Right. Some people with a Botox and you can't even tell if they're smiling with their eyes. You gotta remember. <laughs> I just feel like right now that, and I think we need to be conscious of this, that yeah. people are not looking each other in the eye and yep. it's making us feel more lonely. I mean, I right. understand the mask. I wear it too. I'm a breast cancer survivor. You bet I'm wearing that mask. Right. You know, my immune yep. system is terrible. So, you know, but you, I still look people in the eye and I talk to them. Now, I may have to say it three times because have you noticed that people can't hear as well with the mask on? It's, it's very true. It's very true. That's everybody, whether you had bad hearing before this started or not. It's just more difficult. So you have to be more intentional with the speaking and the listening, right? Exactly. I mean, just life is just different right now and we have to figure it out. But I think we're all doing well. We're just, you know, I just feel like people right now are just like uncertain. There's a yep. lot of uncertainty in the world. Yep. And, you know, it, a lot of this will help us as far as keeping our, our attitude and our head in line. And I think that comes from your faith and doing your devotionals every day and working out because Lord, I hate working out and I hate sweating, but I do it every single day because it makes me better and my mind better. I mean, you've got to find out what works for you during these crazy times. You absolutely do. And you have to kind of go back to those basics, whether you love them or not, that is so true to get some exercise in, get yeah. the blood flow and the endorphins flow and all of that is pivotal, which actually you helped uh, answer one of the questions I hadn't even asked yet, which Lori Long uh, Kanzen said, she looks amazing. How does she do that? And how does she stay so young? So okay, you already answered that. I love that. Well, I appreciate it. I have like, I really do have a routine. Every day I get up and I have a puppy. Well, she's two now. A Bichon. That's still, that's still a puppy. Two she, is still a puppy. Yeah. It's a March hair. It actually did. I have to just get her out of the room right before we started. <laughs> but anyway, I have this, I walk my puppy and then I work out and then I do my devotional because I got to have, not only do I want to set my body right, I want to set my mind right. Yep. You know? And I think with doing all that, you know, it just helps me so much, yep. so much to just get through the day and you look better and you feel better. Yep. And then also gives you confidence and it, you know, it. confidence is everything. Yep. It matters. Like it all, it's, it is, it's an integrative, right? It's not just one thing. And I love the idea of balance, but I think balance is kind of, uh, I don't know, it's lofty. I've never really been able to experience it, but the whole thing of being able to say integration mm -hmm. and having that right integration. And I think that it is, it all links up. So I love that. All right. We can keep going for hours, but I'm going to, I'm going to wrap things up with one last question and I'll give it to you. Um, and then I'm going to do a little pitch for you. Okay. So I'll let you think as I ask it, but here's the thing. You've got a lot of, a lot of dream think doers, men, women, they're saying, amen, Lori, thanks for this encouragement. What's one last thing that you want them to remember, especially as they're thinking about that next step for them, that next season for them. What do you want to, what's one last thing you want to equip them with? Okay. I'll let you think about that for a second. Um, guys, we've been talking with Lori Allen. Um, as you know, she's the owner of Bridals by Lori. She's the heart of TLC's show, Say Yes to the Dress, Atlanta. And her new book, which you're going to want to grab, is Say Yes to What's Next, How to Age with Elegance and Class While Never Losing Your Beauty and Sass. You can grab it wherever books are sold. All right, bring us home. Okay, I'm going to bring you home. What I want to say to all you women out there is our life is far from over. Mm. You know, I feel like that I'm still learning and I've got so much left of this world to give. And I want to motivate men and women out there to just enjoy this next part of your cookie down to the crumb, honey. Right. Enjoy it. Give it yep. in and enjoy it. I love it. I love it. Lori, thanks for doing what you do. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for being generous. Thank you.
All right, guys, welcome back to a bonus episode of Dream Think Do. We are talking with our guest, Lori Allen, who is the owner of Bridals by Lori and the star of Say Yes to the Dress Atlanta. She's got a new amazing book out called Say Yes to What's Next. She's absolutely amazing, lived an incredible life, and she is nowhere near being done. Uh, we're talking about prayer, though. We're just going to do a little bonus episode and talk about prayer. So, Lori, thanks so much for being, will being willing to talk with us about this. Absolutely. I mean, prayer is integral to my survival. I love it. So give us an example of that because, you know, as we were talking, uh, we also, you know, we're, we're doing this thing called We Agree to Pray, which is just people from all walks of life, all backgrounds coming together. We don't necessarily have to agree on anything else other than we agree to pray. Uh, so, you know, part of this is just encouraging people to say prayer works, prayer moves the needle. Where, what's an example for you, big or small? of where prayer played out for you? Well, many times I have prayed for my parents because I've got elderly parents and that's yeah. a big factor in the book and prayed for their health and prayed for me to have strength to guide them. And, and you know, I can definitely see where I'm calmer around mm. my parents and I can guide them better after I pray. It helps me set my head. But then there's been times when I have had really more tragic things happen like breast cancer yeah. and I didn't want to be uh, this was really important to me Mitch not to be a big weenie and go oh my gosh I've got breast cancer da -da. And yeah I well you would totally deserve to be complaining I mean just get don't get me wrong you would totally have the pass to but complain I, but I love that you had that goal I did not that was very important to me and I'm like God, please give me the strength to get through this, number one, mm. and number two, to be strong mm. and to inspire other women because, you know, I'm just a regular working woman. I am yeah. a big mouth. And uh, to, to help me to be strong. And yeah. I found this inner strength when I had breast cancer that I absolutely did not know I had. Huh. And I did not discuss it every day with people. Sure. You know, if people asked me about it, of course, I would, you know, talk about it. But it did not consume me and be my entire life. And then once, and I knew in my head and through my prayers that I was going to get through this. Hmm. And then once that one year journey, because breast cancer usually takes a year out of your life. And once mm -hmm. that one year journey was up, I had this peace about me that I was going to be okay, you know? Wow. And yep. I think this praying and, and, and my faith really helped me get through this time. I did. Yeah. No, it did. I couldn't yeah. have done it. That's amazing. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And if you're okay with it, we, in our regular, our full interview, we talked a little bit about your, your routine, but I'd love to, if you have a second, I'd love to talk the, the mechanics. Like sometimes I think people think, all right, prayer only works if I can go, you know, pray on top of a mountaintop in perfect, you know, perfect weather. And it, it took four hours to get there. It's like, but I know that it's a, it's a integral part of your every day. So how do you, what does it look like for you when Lori Allen prays? What does that look like? Oh, I'm praying on the treadmill. <laughs> I am. I am on the treadmill. Yeah. Amen. I love it. Pray, pray without ceasing means treadmills for sure. I, and commuting, right? <laughs> Praying when I'm walking my dog. I, yeah. you know, I, I talk to God all day long, you know, yeah. please give me strength to get through this. It's not a set thing every day. I do do a devotional every morning and I read my Bible in the evening, but mm. I'm praying and talking to God always, you know, all the time. If I need him, he's there for me. And I just, I, I, he probably gets sick of me actually. <laughs> I doubt it. I can't imagine anybody getting sick of you, especially God. So I, I love that. I love that. So let's, let's wrap this up, but we'll ask, you know, as, cause you really, you have gone through significant challenges, obviously a 40 year plus entrepreneur. I mean, we could probably write 800 page book on that alone, the challenges that have come with that, but breast cancer, you also, when we talked about in our interview, you just recently had a significant fall while shooting the show Broke mm -hmm. both wrists, broke your nose, concussion, the whole deal. You've had some challenges. Right. I know there's some people listening right now that are facing challenges, whatever it is, whether it's been brought on by COVID, whether it's been brought on just by life. 
And they want to believe. They're kind of like that father who says, you know, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. What's one last thing you might encourage them on, especially when it comes to maybe they're just reawakening right. prayer, right? Like they're just starting to kind of get back to it. Like they love the thought of being encouraged like you are, but maybe they're not quite there yet. What might one last thing you might well, encourage them with? I'm not the perfect example. I mean, I'm a Christian and I have many faults and I want you not to be afraid to talk to God. Mm. I mean, because he's there for us and yeah. You fear not. How many times is that in the Bible? I think 365 times. More than anything else, more than any other phrase, right? Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, God doesn't promise us that life's going to be a bed of roses, but he's going to be there for us. Yeah. And he has been there for me always. Do not be afraid. Do yeah. not be afraid. I'm not perfect. I never would say I'm perfect. No way. I love it. I love it. And that's what we've talked about with, you know, we agree to pray. It's like I said, you know, I'm no expert on prayer, but I'm a lifelong student, which means I've gotten some F's and some A's and everything in between. So we're learning together, right? So I love it. I love it. So Lori, thanks so much for being generous. Thanks so much for sharing your stories, your thoughts, uh, your heart on this. And thanks for being in this together. All right. Thank you so much.